Manchester United 2, City 1, and the FA Cup final is won by Manchester United. Who saw that coming? Personally, I didn't see it coming. But you know what I didn't even see even more? I found myself kind of rooting for Man United to beat City. Yes, in this game, I didn't care. That we uh, that we had a former rivalry in Man City uh, for Manchester United. I just wanted to see Man City lose what they did at the end of the season to keep churning out win after win after win after win. Where was this performance when we needed them to drop points in the league? Non-existent. Manchester United today put in a great shift. And if this is Eric Ten Hag's last game, he had a managerial masterclass today versus Pep Guardiola. They went man for man in the midfield. Put four midfielders in there. They ha- and they and they continuously found their way at Man- at Manchester City's defense, forcing Gavardio and Ortega to make a mistake for the first goal, and then the second goal, a moment of magic from Bruno Fernandez. Now, I just need to give some plaudits to some of the Manchester United players, some of the some of the people at Manchester United, because today the performance was one of their best performances in a long time, and the team that they put out there, it was a good team, really good team. By the way, if that if that team was fit and available, they would not be eighth in the league. Very simple. They had Varane, his final game at Manchester United, delivering them silverware. Uh, Aaron Wambasaka, Martinez, and Dela. And I thought Martinez and Varane, those two are good centre back pairing. They're a decent centre back pairing, actually. Not I wouldn't say good, decent. Um, Kobe Menu, the kid just oozes class. Nineteen years old scoring in a cup final for Manchester United, had himself one really good debut season. We cannot lie. Kobe Mainu this season has been a breath of fresh air for Manchester United, and he has a bright, bright future at Manchester United. Amrabat had a decent game, and I thought Amrabat late in the season has has shown that he's worth keeping, but I don't know why they never played him more throughout the rest of the season. Garnacho, big performance from him, scoring the early goal, getting it. causing a lot of havoc on that line and he played pretty much almost the whole entire game until he got subbed off late but Bruno Fernandes captain's performance Bruno Fernandes is someone who gets a lot of criticism from Manchester United fans and I understand sometimes why he gets the criticism but days like today he showed his class that pass to Kobe Mainu, the ability to continuously push the, the pace, keep the possession flowing, doing what he did from the front foot, one of the main driving forces in the Manchester United attack today, and also basically stating that he wants to stay. It's been a big weekend for him after he had the Player Tribune interview and what he did today. Big performance for, for Bruno Fernandes. You can't even hate on him there. Big win for Manchester United and it just meant so much to their team. You had Rashford, who had a poor season, breaking down in tears. Varane leaving. You had Ten Hag potentially leaving. Amrabat might be his last game. Scott McTominay might be leaving in the summer. Um, Kobe Minu scoring in, in a final. Garnacho scoring in a final. Their their future looks bright with Garnacho, Kobe Minu, Diallo, and 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 Rasmin Hoyland. They, they do have a core of young players that they can build around Manchester United. And then now we go over to Manchester City. Pep Guardiola looked rattled. He looked so rattled by the result, ladies and gentlemen. It was crazy. Then you go to Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland in cup finals, I think he's uh, nine cup finals for Man City, zero goals, zero assists. Just doesn't show up in cup finals. As you can imagine, people make the say, say that about Kevin, uh, about Erling Haaland. They could also say that about Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne in these cup finals doesn't last until the 60th minute. He was subbed off in this game in the 56th minute. And also, did did Foden play? Did Foden play? Yeah, yeah. Maybe he got an assist for 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 a goal, but. He could have scored a goal himself. He could have done more to get that team, push them forward. The star man, the player of the season, the 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 Stockton, the Stockton Messi or whatever they call him, Stockport Messi, whatever they call him, he could have done more. He could have done more. He didn't show it today. Rodri, humble yourself. Humble yourself. 74 wins. And then he talks shit. And this is what happens. When you talk shit, this is what happens. Humble yourself, Rodri. You're not that guy, pal. You always chat shit. He needs to calm down, right? Kovacic, Ake, all these guys, I'm not going to get at every single player. I'm just going to say Gavardio and Ortega had a big mix-up for that first goal, and it put Manchester City under a lot of pressure. And Manchester City, this is their first domestic cup 
final loss under Pep Guardiola and only their second loss after losing to Chelsea in the Champions League final. So Pep Guardiola has an amazing final record with Man City and this is now his second defeat. It's unfortunate for, for Man City, but you know what? Less left silverware for them. Arsenal and a lot of teams are affected by this. Arsenal don't play in the Community Shield. I'm happy with that. I don't I don't really want to play in the Community Shield next year. Um, the Community Shield curse is a real thing, apparently. Um, Chelsea are also mudded. Mason Mount wins a trophy and lifts the Wembley curse. Plus, they are now going to be playing in the Conference League where they're going to be challenging uh, and, and having to qualify for the Conference League. So that's another thing right there. And then Newcastle. Newcastle could make this interesting for us as with Newcastle now having a situation where they will most likely not be in Europe 100%. Yep, they're not in Europe. Manchester United have taken them out of the European spots because they were in Conference League. Chelsea have dropped down to Conference League and Newcastle are out of Europe completely, which makes the sale of Bruno Gamares more possible. And even maybe if we can squeeze in a sale for Isaac, that just makes it a little bit, a little bit more possible. We need to wait and see what happens there. But the funny thing for me is Chelsea are now going to have less money as, as they're not going to be in Europa League. They're going to be in the Conference League. But in the other hand, they could go and potentially win every single potential European trophy if they go win the Conference League. So we'll see. They could potentially have the last laugh. At this moment in time, though, it is kind of funny seeing Chelsea in the Conference League. Um, what else is there? Surely, do you think they still sack Ten Hag? Would you still sack Ten Hag after that masterclass performance in the FA Cup final? Or do you think, regardless, he goes on and does his thing? Because he had a word to say. He said, if they don't want him, he's going to move on and he's going to win trophies. He's an arrogant guy. And he and he's kind of he's kind of funny uh, after winning the FA Cup, going on to say that. Some people would even say Manchester United had a better season than Arsenal. Would you guys go that far? Let me know. Would you go that far? Personally, for me... I didn't care less personally. It is what it is. If you guys think they had a better season, if you guys don't think they have a better season, I know who's in the better situation going forward. It's Arsenal Football Club. Simple as I'd rather be us than them. Um, obviously, you don't want. I'm, we're going to be in the Champions League next season. I know we didn't win the league. We came in second, but hey, leaves us in a better situation going forward next season. Hopefully, that we can we can continue to push on and and go on to win that league. As for Manchester United. They're going to be going into the unknown after this FA Cup win. A lot of players going out the door, potentially a manager going out the door. We're going to have to see what they look like come uh, come the new season. As for Man City, this could this could damper their mood a little bit, but then they're going to probably forget about it by next week. <laughs> but yeah, that's my thoughts on the FA Cup uh, final win. I can't believe I even seen myself rooting for Manchester United, but I just love the chaos, the absolute chaos of of. Newcastle being out of the European spots, Chelsea being in, in the Conference League, Manchester United back in the Europa League, Man City don't get the domestic double. That's also a massive thing. Arsenal don't have to worry about the Community Shield curse for next season. That is a thing. But yeah, it's just weird. I've never would have thought I would, I would find myself. I never really would have thought I would find myself semi okay with Manchester United lifting silverware as long as they stop City from winning that's that's it and yeah where was this City at the end of the season man we needed this City man we needed this City but yeah I still find myself sick that I that I that I found a little bit of joy in Manchester United taking that two goal lead versus Man City I've been waiting for them to drop points all season but yeah I'll be back with another video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you guys think. Do you believe Manchester United, because they're in eighth and they won an FA Cup, that is more important, winning that FA Cup than, than league position, Champions League finish, and all that other stuff? Who had the better season? I'm out of here, people. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.